When I was a kid, I had no idea whatsoever how to alternate pick. Everything I played was just down picking. And I developed a fairly fast down pick as a result of it, but there's only so fast you can down pick. So I had no idea whatsoever how to alternate pick. What happened was I actually wound up through, um, you know, practicing and everything like that, I wound up getting carpal tunnel syndrome in both my hands and I wound up having to go in and have surgery. Well, after that, I came back to the guitar and I basically had to start kind of rebuilding my, my muscles and everything and start kind of, I wouldn't say relearning how to play, but it was kind of like that. And the awesome part about that was I started learning how to alternate pick um, because of that. So, you know, a bad thing actually wound up turning into a good thing for me. So I started learning how to alternate pick. And so what I want you to do is understand the concept of alternate picking, and then we're going to try and do that as a three-minute exercise as well. Now, in theory, what you want to be able to do is if you were able to do, let's say, your down strokes, your, your two per click at 160, you would want to logically be able to put ups in between those, so you'd be doing four at 160. That's, that's the logical idea of this, is that if you were going... You could move back and forth between those two, okay? But in order to do that, we first have to understand the real concept of alternate picking, okay? Alternate picking, obviously, is this down up. But here's a few things that people do wrong when they alternate pick. The first thing is they have a tendency of picking more at an angle. Let me kind of show you here. Instead of picking straight like this, they turn the pick like this, like when you're strumming, you kind of turn the pick up. Well, the problem is if you turn the pick up, you're going to get stuck every time you try and do that upstroke. You're going to get stuck on that string. So you almost want to think of it almost like a pendulum. You know, the string is sitting right here, and you're basically kind of doing this over the top of that string as a pendulum. Now when you alternate pick, you're either going to be moving from the elbow, you're going to be moving from the wrist, or you're going to be moving from the fingers. And everybody's different. And to be honest, I think I do all three of them at different speeds, so it kind of depends. Okay? If I was going really, really slow, I think it more comes from the, the wrist or the elbow, and as I go faster, it's either going to come from the wrist or it's going to come from the fingers as I try and go faster. So the point is, is that what you need to do is you need to make the down and the up sound pretty much exactly the same. So your goal is to try and get that to sound the same on both sides. So you're not getting dunt, 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 like one really hard one and one really soft one. You want them to be balanced. So if you kind of think of your pick as kind of a pendulum and it's moving back and forth across that string, Okay, makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to get across that. Okay, So the first thing to understand about alternate picking is you need to learn how to do it. Before you ever set a metronome, you need to become comfortable with moving your pick back and forth. Now, as I was saying, obviously alternate picking is extremely efficient compared to just trying to down pick everything. If you're alternate picking everything, not only is twice as fast, it's even faster. Um, it's a horrible analogy, but if you think of it kind of like going outside right now and you were going to try and hop on one leg and then you tried to run on both legs, you wouldn't be twice as fast running on both legs. You'd be a lot faster running on both legs. It's efficiency, and so that's really what's happening here. It's because as you're alternate picking, you really never have to leave the string. That's another point to make is as you're picking, if you're picking alternate picking slow, you might leave a lot of space in between, kind of like if you were strumming. But if you were strumming faster, you tend to strum smaller as you strum faster. Well, the same thing has to happen with the guitar pick. You know, if you were really good at alternate picking, the, the goal is, is that if this was the string, you're really never leaving the string. You know, you're not starting up here and then coming down here. You're really staying on both sides of that string the entire time, so you're staying right there. The trap people have when they start learning how to alternate pick is that they have a tendency of turning the pick. They do this. Everybody learns how to turn their pick like this. And the problem is, is that, yes, it can make it more efficient because there's less friction, but if you turn the pick too much, you're not getting a percussive picking sound. You're just getting this weird swishy thing happening, and you don't want that. You want to alternate pick and get that percussive sound on both sides of that string. So if you flatten the string out more, I mean, again, if you're turning it at all, it's, it's just a little bit. You don't want to turn the pick significantly. 
So you're getting this weird swishing sound. You just want to turn a little bit. Now, if you notice my guitar sitting here, my guitar is already sitting at an angle. So if I come straight on, that's exactly where I need to be to, to accomplish my alternate picking. So, bottom line, if you were able to do uh, two downstrokes at 160, ideally you'd want to be able to do down, up, down, up, four total at 160. But when you first start doing this, that may not be the case. So what I usually tell my students to do is to start off doing down, up at 160. So you're going the exact same speed as your downs. Okay, It's just instead of going down, 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 you're going down, up, down, up, down, up. And Let me show you that. So this is at 120 here. Ideally, I want to be able to do this. Okay, but if I can't, what I can do is just start at the same spot and try and do this. Okay. Now, the hope is, though, is that as you get better at the alternate picking idea, not with the metronome, but just actual alternate picking, your alternate picking is going to move significantly faster than your down picking, okay? Because your down picking can only go so fast, but your alternate picking will kind of take off on you as you get the technique down. So again, ideally, if you're sitting at a certain speed, you want to be able to go twice as fast using those ups in between. If you start off and this alternate picking thing is just not working for you, start off at the same speed. Now here's again going back to my notepad. I would take and write down how fast my downs are for three minutes and how fast my alternate picking is for three minutes. And every time I shift something, I write it down. I change it and I write it down. It seems kind of anal retentive, but I'm telling you, it really does work. So those are the first two techniques. That's your right hand techniques is down picking and alternate picking. And you want to keep moving those as long as you play guitar, you want to keep moving those forward, keep strengthening those, those two things, because that's what guitar playing is, is your ability to down pick and your ability to up pick. There is nothing else. You, know, you, don't, you can't pick sideways. You can pick slide, but you can't pick. So learning how to do those two things. Okay.